please rise. We'll say the pledge together. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> Would you please call the roll? Mr. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Workman. Yes. Ms. Regola Dye. Yes. Mrs. Getzman. Yes. Dr. Bennett. Yes, thank you. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes for the last two meetings, the special meeting of February 8th and the regular um, meeting minutes of February 10th. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Regola Dye. Do I have a second? Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Were there any corrections? Hearing none, would you call the roll? Ms. Regola Dye. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Workman. Yes. Mrs. Getzman. Yes. Dr. Bennett. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. I'd like to welcome everyone this evening, both those who are here and also those who are watching online. And I would like to begin by thanking our superintendent, our district leadership team, our teachers and our staff for all their extra efforts, their flexibility, and their commitment during these challenging times. You are appreciated, and I wanted you to know that. Um, I'd also like to thank in advance our children and their parents and the community for their patience and their understanding as plans evolve and additional needs are revealed. And please let us know if something isn't working and needs to be addressed, um, let us know. It's the boards and the school district's goal to responsibly serve our school community to the best of our ability. We covet your prayers and support for all our school family, and thank you for working with us. And I know some other board members would like to say, maybe Mr. Well, Workman. Thank you for coming. These are definitely very challenging times, and I'll echo Dr. Bennett by saying um, thank you to Mr. Cedar and his staff, parents, students. Um, it seems like the information that we get is coming by the minute and a very fluid situation in, in a lot of different areas. So um, thank you for your leadership and uh, we will get through this and it does uh, take some patience and understanding on a lot of folks' parts. So thank you. Thank you. Ms. Gulladad. Thank you. Thanks uh, to those who are here tonight and to our Jacket family uh, across the uh, city. I too want to echo uh, our deep gratitude to our superintendent and all staff and in particular our uh, classified staff, our bus drivers um, and custodians who are going to be uh, challenged a lot to take care of our children. I'd also like to uh, give a special thank you to our teachers who I knew shed some tears Sunday, especially the elementary teachers who uh, were hoping to have one last day to say um, goodbye for a spring break with our children. We hear you, we understand your pain, and we are deeply uh, grateful to all that you do and to our city overall for everything that you do for our great public schools. We're here for you and we know that you're here for us. Thank you. Mr. Thompson. Well, I can't really go any further beyond what's already been said. A great appreciation as well. Um, and again, a lot of uh, a lot of changing things, a lot of adjustments. Just when you think you have a plan and the plan changes, I really have been impressed in, 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 in watching how quickly you're listening, how quickly um, you and your uh, team have adjusted. Um, I know I had a chance to hear a little firsthand uh, inside my own family <laughs> of uh, some of those things and know that uh, there's a lot of work that goes into it. If there's ever a silver lining to some of these things, you, know, you have to look for those and try to remain positive and know that we, like you said, we'll, we'll get through this, we'll come out of this. But there's so many different lives being affected in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. But if there's one thing, as I uh, talked with my family yesterday, even though I defied everything and saying we did get together as a group one time. <laughs> but I did look at them and I said, you know, use this as an opportunity to hit the reset button. Mm -hmm. Because we live in a very chaotic world, racing, going here, going there, and whatever. Now you're going to have an opportunity, whether you wanted to or not, to kind of settle down mm -hmm. and just appreciate each other. And um, so that's, that's my offering for this situation. But again, deep appreciation for all that the 
uh, all of the you know, folks within Auburn City Schools have gone through and the parents' willingness to work with us on this. Thank you. This is Gethin. Uh, just thank you again to the administrative uh, team, the staff, the teachers. Um, I'm not sure what else I can add at this time, um, other than as I prepared for my young learners today, you sit back and realize that learning is not just inside brick walls, it's outside of the brick walls uh, as well. And although our buildings are amazing um, and it's great to be together, but I think this is great family time and we have been blessed to have this extra time together um, with instruction from our teachers um, and how our parents can now adapt and help our children as well. So I think this is a time of reflection um, and as a Jacket Nash Nation, we believe we do believe and we will be stronger on the back side of this. So um, I encourage anybody that needs assistance or needs help uh, to please reach out as a district and as individuals. Um, we are here to help um, anyone to get through this situation. So we will be stronger. So thank you. Well, thank you. And on behalf of the staff, I would uh, thank you for those commendations. It truly is a staff effort. Um, we have wonderful staff from our leadership team all the way down to our teachers, to our classified staff. Um, none of the decisions that we've made in just a short period of time from uh, Wednesday all the way to today has been made in isolation. It's with a, with a lot of prayer and with a lot of consultation with, um, you know, members of the leadership team. Uh, our unions, both unions are represented here, and I would say we're in constant communication, really looking out for the best of our students. Um, and so I say thank you on behalf of them, and I thank them as well. So uh, we live in unprecedented times, and uh, how we respond to this time uh, will, will better define us as a district and as individuals. And, um, you know, I, I know we're up for the challenge. So. Thank you. Okay. Um, under commendations and communications, um, we have somewhat of a boilerplate uh, agenda. Uh, we want to probably spend a little bit of extra time certainly on our, our the real topic at hand tonight but we will go through our regular agenda generally the highlight of our meeting is when we get a chance to see either our students or what's going on in a particular building and celebrate with them the many wonderful things uh, this month was to be columbia and there are some amazing things going on at columbia and it just didn't feel it would do it justice uh, at this time to bring them to the board. Um, we want to celebrate what they do while we're uh, kind of dealing with this. We thought it best to postpone. So we will bring Columbia back at a better time. Um, we also have the Academic Booster Pro Club president who uh, really are doing some amazing things right now. They've reinvigorated um, the Academic Booster Club and have some really neat plans. We want to hear about those. Um, now isn't quite the time for that either. So both of those reports of public participation have been uh, postponed at this time. Um, we did decide with uh, uh, Hayden uh, to leave her at home. Um, and there's not a whole lot going on from this point forward, but we'll certainly bring her back. Uh, Darcy, I don't know if you want to say anything. Just kind of echo what you said. It's crazy. We're all stressed and overwhelmed right now, but I think after today, People feel a lot better um, if we can get kids and buildings, getting them what they need and out tomorrow. I think we'll all be ready to start on Wednesday and hopefully take a step back and just breathe a sigh of relief at that point because we'll be up to lunch. So just appreciate working together and understanding that everybody has concerns and fears and just working through them. Thank you. Thank you. Doug, anything from Everybody said everything already. So. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to add. Um, any public participation? No. Uh, you will notice that uh, we are practicing our sense of social dis distancing as well, kind of having our personal space. Gary and I can't touch, um, but we do have a very short. Uh, you know, we're trying to adhere to both the governor and the president's advice. Now it's down to 10 people per meeting. Don't know if you've heard that most recently, but it's uh, changing uh, hour by hour. Um, and so we'll do our best to, to try to adhere as best we can. Um, we'd have no additions or deletions. Um, 
under the superintendent's report today, um, you know, I have some items for information. <laughs> and obviously the one that probably we'll spend a little bit of time with and, and try to bring you up to speed as best we can, although I, I, I'd like to believe that we have tried to continue to do that. Um, the extended school uh, situation. So the district, ironically, the district leadership team met last Wednesday on uh, March 11th and one of our main topics was to sit down as a district leadership team, which by the way includes principals and union leadership, as well as uh, someone from each, a teacher from each one of our buildings. We probably spent the better half of three quarters of the day beginning to have these kinds of conversations about this coronavirus. We talked about our emergency operating plan. We went through each one of the critical phases from prevention to protection uh, to preparedness um, to actually our response and then hopefully the recovery phase and so really for about three quarters of a day we worked on each one of those little areas little knowing that the very next day the governor would come out and make an announcement that schools would be closed so uh, there's been a lot of comments uh, since that Wednesday meeting like if we didn't have this day where would we be right now? Um, when the governor made that announcement on Thursday, you know, we all took a big gulp, um, understood what was going on, um, and yet we knew there's a lot of work to do. And uh, we immediately called a principal's meeting on Friday morning. Uh, we developed a plan based upon what we knew at that time. And that's the real interesting and critical uh, thing of this is, you develop plans based on what you know at the time. And uh, we really, really felt good about those plans. Um, but we always have to be willing to understand that plans can change as more information comes to itself. Um, our plan on Friday uh, was to really assure our students to begin to prepare with the idea that Monday we would come and we would really be able to kind of help the um, certainly the K-5 or K-5 students um, be prepared to leave us. Uh, as the governor came out on Saturday and began to talk about uh, restaurants and those kinds of things closing and as the number went from 100 in a room down to 50 to a room, you know, we started to have some greater concerns about bringing all the students back on campus on Monday. And, you know, we're, we're just the size of a district that I'm bringing a thousand students into the high school and a thousand into the middle school. Certainly we have some surrounding districts that can manage that a little bit better. And um, we then made a, a next level decision, which was, well, let's not do that, but let's take Monday. And we met with our principals again on Monday who met with their leadership teams, which again was today, to really begin to roll out this, this next opportunity for us. Um, online learning, and we're blessed to be one-to-one -one in grades six through 12. And so we had a little advantage or a head start in a lot of situations relative to that. And so we feel good about where that can go, but we still wanted to get our kids back so they could get that math book or that English book or that novel or that science book because while they'll be working remotely from home, you know, we're not yet to a place where all of our textbooks and things are right online. And so that was the plan and we even thought about let's stagger it. Let's make tomorrow a day where, uh, and if you, if you saw the parent update, we're going to bring in students, uh, last names A through uh, F between 8 and 9 o'clock. And then at 9.30 to 10.30, we'll bring in another group. We wanted to try to lessen the number of people who were in the buildings because really we wanted to make sure we could, especially at the K-5 level, to give them their books, to give them their student work bags. And in a lot of cases, and I just almost uh you, you can almost become emotional because i had teachers saying they just wanted to hug their kids and they wanted to say it'll be okay um and so that as of this morning was and and is our plan we've even decided this morning because i really feel like right now this is no longer a three-week situation if you're reading the tea leaves and you're seeing what's going on it feels like this is going to go on for an extended period of time. Um, a lot of reports have it going to the mid, mid, mid towards the mid April. 
And so those are going to be ongoing challenges. We made a decision this morning uh, that we still had enough Chromebooks at the elementary level that we were going to assign Chromebooks to fourth and fifth grade students as well. And so we left the meeting this morning with that very idea in mind that we're going to, you know, we're going to assign Chromebooks tomorrow to our uh, fourth and fifth grade students with the hope that maybe even a week from now with the right kind of plan we would even be willing to go down to third grade and probably stop there. Um, so off we went. Uh, teachers have been working hard on those things. Bus drivers and cooks have had meetings. Uh, we're working on our food service plan. Uh, uh, if I were just to describe that thought process, um, you know, we want to put our students, especially our most vulnerable students, who really depend upon us for a breakfast and a lunch. And by the way, we have nearly 1,900 students in the district who qualify for those things. 1,900. That's a lot of students. And so we developed a plan that we were going to at nine different locations throughout Mount Vernon have a bus. Everybody recognizes a bus. And between the hours of 11 and 12 o'clock, we would have any student who wanted to come to the bus uh, to pick up a lunch and the next morning's breakfast, they would be handed that at that time. We even went one step further and decided we weren't going to worry about free and reduced lunch folks and we were going to provide it to anybody who came um, so that we could support them. And quite frankly, the government is supporting that effort as well, which is um, we're very, very thankful for. Um, so they met and they began to have those conversations. Um, and, and those plans are in place to start tomorrow for that. Little did we know that the governor and the president came on later this afternoon and we're continuing to get further and further restrictions, which certainly makes us step back and contemplate our plan. Um, I don't know if you've heard some of the restrictions, but uh, they, they are now closing um, really kind of what I'd call non-essential kinds of um, um, businesses. You're going to find things like the YMCA and fitness centers and multiple Library. locations that are now being kind of shut down. You know, we started out at meetings of 200 to one. We've gone to 100 to one. It you know, fell down to 50 to one. We're now hearing uh, as of even three o'clock today, 10 to one. It's kind of why you see a room of just about 10 people here. And yet it's so important that we get our students this information, but yet the worry continues to flourish. I mean, everybody reads these reports. I've been talking with Darcy and, and union folks and you know, we could all have our opinion on, you know, how serious it is, you know, how we take it. The thing we can never do is take away someone's fear. Mm -hmm. I mean, their fear is their fear. Um, you know, I'd like to believe in a room our size. I feel pretty comfortable, but I can't make that decision for Gary and I can't make that decision for someone else. And it is scary. What they're saying on TV is scary. Um, what they said also today is that if you're 65 or older, um, they're asking that you stay at home now. Um, so now you've got an age kind of a component. They also have made a recommendation that if you're expecting a child or maybe the, you know, the father of someone who's expecting a child, that there's advice that maybe they ought to stay home. Um, and so you can see that fear just kind of continues to, to rise a little bit. And so as we try to develop our plan, it keeps changing. I thought of sending an update to, st to just the staff um, prior to this board meeting, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to wait. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to wait until we get that chance to have a conversation to really kind of get your sense of some of this and, and where we're at. Um, I, I would love to get to the, and I, I, I paraphrase it this way with the leadership team this morning. I feel like we're at a little bit of a marathon here. We're not at a sprint anymore. This is a marathon. It's kind of the long haul. Today was about getting us to the starting line. Uh, tomorrow is that starting line where we can give all of our students their stuff. Once I get into the starting line and we're off and running, let's just get to the first mile marker. You know, I don't need to see the finish line right now. We're going to take care of the next three days. And then we'll plan after the next three days for the next five days. 
and we'll get better at online learning and we'll get better at distributing materials to kids but we need to get to that starting line and that's what tomorrow's all about I would be less than honest if I didn't say after the meeting this afternoon there are folks even concerned about tomorrow and you know even though we're going to stagger and bring kids to the school we're bringing all these students to the school um, it's not a sit and visit it's not a conference it's really come on in let's get your stuff and you know we're gonna respectfully as best we can you know kind of send you on your way um, that's our plan right now unless the board you know feels differently about that um, I know there will be teachers who have some trepidation about that I know there's some classified staff who worry about those kinds of things right now the plan after tomorrow is we'll follow the governor's lead um, relative to those who can do their job and do it remotely um, initially I would say last Friday I was quite frankly of the mindset that you know what you know if I have a building you know full of teachers at Columbia they have 14 teachers we should be fine there I mean you know that distance is really big we should be fine bringing those folks in um, but as time goes on as you begin to hear more and you begin to hear more about your staff we have uh, more staff than I would have imagined who are challenged with health conditions who may be an age situation may be diabetic who may be going through an unfortunate chemo who have immune deficiency you know systems in place and they have a legitimate right to be concerned and and then of course fear is just what it is I, I you know I can't change that so we did decide um, initially I was going to have everybody come in that could even do their job remotely but I, I thought it'd be best to have them right here um, we're going to allow teachers to work from home I've been very very clear uh, with both the union and the teachers that we've talked to and the principals they are to work from home the hours are going to be from eight o'clock to three o'clock yes I'll give them a lunch and I don't expect them from 11 to 12 to have to answer emails but they are to work at home and be available to students who text and email and all those things um, and you know it's it's not to be well they won't be going to the gym now but <laughs> it's not to be out and about doing other things these are work days and so um, and and trust me 99.9% .9 of our teachers understand that and they they respect that and they'll be doing that job but I think they can do their work from home you know the other challenge becomes how about our classified staff I can't transport kids on buses when I don't have kids in school uh, we are going to use bus drivers in the form of our food service program custodians can't work from home when we're in school um, secretaries is kind of an interesting mix um, but quite frankly being here to answer phones and be available is, is an important time when you have a lot of concern so but we've talked about that um, and yet I would not doubt that it may come down that they may say all truly non-essential um, folks would have to be sent home and so you balance all of that out and again it changes day by day and you're not quite sure where you're at <laughs> and yet our first and foremost uh, is always of the safety of our students and staff and so that's kind of the the the, the landscape that we're in right now um, and uh, as of right now at 623 um, that's the plan as we move forward um, but that plan will always be subject to change Wow, that was a. We just kind of gave it to you there. So, any 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 thoughts, um, Darcy? Have I articulated that okay? Or no, I mean, no, I your your group kind of. I mean, there's a mixed set of feelings. They don't want to leave their kids, but you're right. There is, and over the weekend, um, I had a lot of fear from everybody. I phone calls and texts and emails and oh my gosh, we're bringing the porch work. You know, I have this or I have this or there was fear i think after today some of that has subsided um i think administrators are doing an excellent job of working you know teachers if i have this one time or one-off situation yeah go home if you are 
immune system is whatever. Um, I think teachers just want to get kids what they need and get them out of the building so they can get home and get to it. So I think that's the yeah. <clears throat> I have a question. Uh, what capability do we have of live streaming from a teacher to student? We do, and I think what you're going to find through this, if there's a silver lining, as Mr. Thompson mentioned, um, understanding the importance of being able to, to deliver instruction differently. I mean, we could tell them over and over, hey, you gotta, you got to really get on board with this and do that, and now I think there's a greater sense of that. Um, those with Chromebooks, they've been practicing Google Hangouts today. Uh, Google Hangout is uh, something where if you look on all of your laptops, you see the little camera. We uh, have deactivated those for traditional work. We have now opened those back up for online learning. So Mr. Hankins could have a group of six students and they could all be online talking. And so we do have that online capability with Google Hangouts. Um, all principals will be getting what they call Zoom accounts. Uh, some of you in the business world may have worked with Zoom before, but you can invite folks to a meeting, so they'll invite uh, teachers to meetings and we can meet remotely. Um, so that capability is certainly there and we're gonna, we're gonna capitalize and utilize it. Will there be a few learning curves? Sure. Um, we have some that are old pros at it, and then we have some that they're just going to have to learn how to how to do it. We got to support them. We had a principal this morning mention that one of uh, their first grade teachers is setting up a Facebook account that parents will be able to sign into, and she's going to read to her kids every day mm -hmm. and do a Facebook Live kind of thing, and then it's recorded so they can watch it later and things like that. But that's that's pretty powerful. Yes. Yeah. You know, th words we've heard about before, like flipped classroom. I'm sure some of you have heard yeah. this word, flipped classroom. You know, it's it's not necessarily as good as certainly one-to-one -one instruction, but now here's a very applicable uh, thing where the teacher can actually uh, video record their lesson, send it out to the students, and, and then they can watch his or her lesson and begin to perform the functions or the you know the job that they have at hand, and then they can communicate back and forth. So it is going to force our our teachers and our students to really look at things um, a little differently. So excuse me, Bill. So the fourth and fifth graders did indeed get Chromebooks then, or they will yeah. get them tomorrow. They were they are to pick up their Chromebooks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The goal then would be we're probably looking. You know, tomorrow will be the, the biggest hurdle we have, in my opinion, getting this thing launched. One, because we are staggering and bringing students in, and I know there's a little trepidation with that. But once we get them their stuff and get them home, then we have the ability to better communicate. And if you think about grades 4 through 12, that we can communicate in an online format. Um, probably moving forward, we're almost thinking of a, um, a carry-up kind of a scenario because some of our younger students, K through two, three, you know, they're going to get three days worth of work. Well, how do we give them next Monday's work? Well, we may end up creating drive up scenarios where we could actually hand it to them without having people come, you know, uh, perhaps into the building. Um, if we can have a drive up and hand out third grade Chromebooks, you know, now all of a sudden we've connected another uh, segment of our student population to some level of online learning. Uh, obviously, online learning isn't the end-all, be-all. There are other very, very important ways to learn, but because of where we're at, we have the capability. We've planned for one-to-one -one learning. We've added to our device list. I mean, we have uh, we have about 3,500 Chromebooks in the district, and that's been very strategic over the years. And we need to take advantage of it now that we have it available to us. So the, the K through three teachers then periodically will then will have to come back into the school and use the copiers and things like that to prepare, right? They so will. They'll have that. Yep, they'll have that option. And again, if we leave that up to them and we say, "Hey, I need your next packet of materials by Monday." then if they want to come in at 10 o'clock at, at night when they're all by themselves, they can. If they want to, you know, it just depends upon the, the concern level of those individuals. Sure. Um, 
And, and, and I think you're going to find even those who might be compromised, who really don't want to leave their house, teachers are going to support them and help them make copies and put those packets and things together. We have people delivering. We have some meetings tomorrow. We have five ETR meetings tomorrow. And they were delivering, hand delivering them to the house because all of those meetings will have parents by phone. And so and we delivered them so that they were ready, that they could join us by phone tomorrow and have a document in front of them. So there's going to be a lot of stick it in the mailbox and go mm -hmm. kind of deliveries. Mm -hmm. What about the, um, like the bus drivers that are not participating in the lunch and the aides that cannot work from home? How are we, I mean, is compensation there? Is, are we unfortunately not going to be able to compensate some of those our, our plan employees is or how is everybody that? employed? Okay. I mean, we feel, um, you know, we feel that we plan for that. Mm -hmm. We feel it's the right thing to do. Um, as far as bus drivers, you know, we have nine locations. We're going to create some redundancy over mm -hmm. the course of the next couple of days, put two bus drivers at each location, for instance, so that if we do have absences or we have something that we have people who can work those things out, same things with custodians or, I mean, cafeteria workers. Okay. Once we settle into a little bit of a routine, mm -hmm. we don't have any idea how many kiddos will come and get a breakfast and Correct. lunch. Um, once we get a better idea of that routine, um, then we can begin to say, okay, where's the rest? How can we best utilize them throughout the district in other various functions? Um, we need to continue to really uh, be prepared for that social distancing. And if we're going to have folks work in buildings to clean or maybe to paint or to work on some yard kind of things, um, you know, we'll have to very strategically be able to work that through. But our goal is that we, we want to keep everybody employed. I mean, that's, you know, I've had so many aides who, even though they work for the ESC and they're not technically our, you know, Mount Vernon City School employees, uh, when we came out with that statement, we're, we're just so incredibly thankful that they had the opportunity mm -hmm. to work because they can't go without a paycheck. And so we feel we can provide that. Now, the one thing we will offer staff is those who are really compromised, and maybe it's because of a health or one of these, you know, situations, or some that really are just so nervous and they decide they don't want to work, um, they can choose not to work. At this time, they wouldn't get paid, but we certainly wouldn't, um, you know, take away their uh, employable rights and those kind of things as they move forward. Thank you. Now, the governor could come along and tell us to send them all home, at which time we would be prepared to pay them um, as per the Ohio Revised Code, which is pretty specific relative uh, to these situations. Yeah. But until such a time, or a time when the board would deem it, hey, we need to take another step, um, our plan was mm -hmm. to find opportunities for them to work uh, in a safe environment um, and kind of earn that earn that pay. I think you're going to find that attitude will be various, varied throughout districts. Mm -hmm. Some districts are taking that charge. There, I've heard of other districts who, you know, at some point will be sending them all home. Mm -hmm. And so you just got to kind of weigh that out and, and understand where we're at right now based upon what we know. Thank you. Yeah. So, Bill, uh, you mentioned the 1,900 uh, students that qualify, but uh, I believe I heard you to say that we're going to extend a, a broader number, right, in our coverage. So it's going to be for all students, right? It'll be for all students. Awesome. We also, when I said we had nine locations, you know, those are fixed locations. They're every one of our elementaries, with the exception of Twin Oak. Twin Oak is a difficult place for people to walk. So what we did was we took the Twin Oak attendance area and we split it up into Elmwood and West. And we'll have a bus here and a bus out at West. Um, we also have, uh, it could be anywhere from one to three if we needed it. Um, buses for people who live one mile outside of one of the radial points to where we have a bus. And um, if they call into the bus garage, you know, we'll make arrangements to have some sort of a route to drop that off for them as well. Right. Any other questions, thoughts, concerns? Um, is there any uh, 
thought uh, to having a um, several days worth of breakfast and lunch available in like a box or something where the bus, you know, they wouldn't have to come every two days or every day. I think it's a great question. And I think until we really have an idea how many will be coming, um, I think after the first couple of days, you'll kind of get a sense that this okay. bus has about, you know, 50 kids, this bus has. And then if we feel like we can strategically pull it off and say, hey, here's three days worth, okay. then we can make that adjustment as we go, really without knowing how many mm -hmm. will come. Um, you know, it will be all we can do just to have one day's worth until we really get a sense of it. Uh, there are some districts who I think who are smaller mm -hmm. who are giving out five days worth. Yeah. And and yet we just don't know how. Again, I just like to say how much we appreciate your yeah. wisdom and um, all the hard work that's gone into making all these plans and working with people. And well, I appreciate that. And again, I know it's a sacrifice. I know, I know we have a lot of this nervous staff, um, and I know there's nervous staff about tomorrow. I mean, today felt a little safer for them because they knew that, you know, we weren't bringing four thousand students into the buildings. Um, but in a in a in a way, even though it's a staggered start, we're at some point bringing two hundred and fifty into Columbia. Mm -hmm. You know, I wish it worked out perfect, but. There's going to be one class that has a lot more S's than they have, you know, E's right. in their last name. And so, you know, we're, we're hoping that maybe between eight and nine, maybe there's, you know, 40 kids that are going off quickly, getting their stuff and leaving. Mm -hmm. And we just got to exercise safety and, and caution. And, you know, it, when we get through tomorrow, uh, that will be a huge sigh of relief uh, just to be able to set ourselves up. We did create a five to six o'clock slot um, for those who did not, weren't able to make it during their, you know, alphabeted staggered time, the four within the regular day. And I, I got to tell you, I'm just thankful to teachers and their willingness to go a little bit above and beyond on this specific day to make sure that we can at least hand these things out. Mm -hmm. Is there any way to ask students um, to observe social distancing? I remember seeing a picture in the Wall Street Journal, I think it was, of an Italian bank and everyone was spaced, you know, in the line instead of <laughs> congregating. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, only maybe by what we model, but right now, you know, it'll be interesting to see how many come at eight o'clock and we'll try to make sure we keep them, you separate. know, spread apart. You know, one of the things is they've got to get their personal items, and that's a hard thing. I, we had thought about setting up some sort of a drive-through even late this afternoon when we heard about uh, this, but, but kids want to get their own kind of belongings, and they know where their stuff is. There's lockers, and, and it's, it would be hard for us to take it all out to them. Mm -hmm. um, so we do need to practice, uh, have folks in the hallways just kind of practicing that social mm -hmm. social discipline there. And some of our students don't have school supplies at home because they brought them to school. Mm -hmm. And so they need to take the markers and the crayons and the pencils and things out of their desk mm -hmm. in order to maybe do some of the projects and things that they have. So I think, you know, I heard today that some people, that some of the buildings are actually cleaning out the desk and putting everything in a bag so it's ready to add the homework to. Mm -hmm. Because they, they don't have those things at home. Right? Mm -hmm. so. You know, I think the one thing you do want to be a little bit cautious of is that I, I, I we understand there's a, a fear out there and it's a rightful fear, but not everybody that's walking around is infected. And it almost feels like we, you know, we, 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 we just can't stay close to anybody. I mean, we know what the signs and symptoms are. We know, you know, how we, we believe we know how you get it. If someone's hacking and coughing, obviously those are concerns, but just passing by to get something, you know, uh, we just need to take that step as we go forward until we know more. And I know there are a lot of community members who'd like to help, but with the restrictions, I don't know how we could do that to even use volunteers. I'll tell you, it was, a, it was, a, it was incredibly heartwarming to, uh, when I put out a notice on Saturday, I believe, about folks on Facebook saying, if you need help with your kids, I'm here to help. And then I put out a little bit of a thing on our parent update that if people wanted to help, call Terry 
and she would have names to be provided. And believe it or not, we had people calling in and saying, you know, uh, if you need additional support or daycare, I might be able to help and I might be able to do this. And, you know, you're going to see restaurants who are starting to provide some opportunities for, um, you know, lunches and those kinds of things. Um, it is a, a, a wonderfully mm -hmm. supportive yes. community, and that's a great thing. We're very blessed. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that's our plan. If it's okay with you as we move forward there, um, feel pretty comfortable how we're moving forward there. Let's get to the starting line tomorrow, and uh, hopefully by 6 o'clock we can all have a deep uh, sigh of relief. Teachers will be kind of working, having the option to work at school or from home. Mm -hmm. Um, and we'll continue to evaluate the classified situation uh, based upon individual circumstances and and you know we, we may find ourselves being mandated to do other things at certain times but we'll always keep the safety of the employees first okay um, you know I hope number three um, uh, I'll, I'll spare the facility update for now, other than to say it continues to move forward. Mm -hmm. It's changed a lot since we've been in there, so maybe in April we'll get a really neat opportunity to see how it's looking. And Justin put out a facility update today Did he? on the, yeah. yeah he, 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 I'm sure he's taking videos and walking through it. <laughs> yeah, he did. Charts. Commencement information is there uh, May 24th uh, at Kenyon College. Um, you know, and that'll be a day of that'll be a day of celebration. So I know we're working with ODE and the many departments uh, that are there to make sure that our seniors aren't negatively impacted during this time frame. I do have a number of items for board approval. I have two for you there: um, uh, community school student participation in athletics. I will say that all athletics are um, postponed at this time. Um, so you're aware if you've read the uh, parent update or the staff update, um, we have postponed all activities. There are no extracurricular practice club meetings. Um, we've actually postponed the use of all facilities until such a time that we feel we can enact those. So we're approving this young young person uh, at the same time. You know, we'll see where we're at. Uh, and secondly, uh, there's your uh, high school and middle school fees for next year. Those two items for your approval. Okay, I would entertain a motion to approve those two items. So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Getzman. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Gulladai. Were there any questions? The only question I had was on the, I didn't have a chance to contact uh, the teacher, uh, Gary, uh, was on the middle school fees for CAP French. I think it was $4.50 and then went up to $14.50. Hmm. I, I don't know, cap French for middle school. It was, or? It was either middle school or high school. I can't remember. It would have to be high school. school. high school for cap. Yeah. Yeah. Something that was the fee was four fifty, and then the next year was fourteen dollars and fifty cents. Well, it's only the middle school fees that are the same as last year. Mm -hmm. Our changes yeah. in the high school. I wonder what I was seeing. Do yeah. you know what I was seeing, Gary? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> There's so many of those fees. All right. I'm then. going to guess that the difference of ten dollars probably becomes some sort of a novel or a, or some sort of a workbook. And okay. I don't uh, know if the testing, like they take a national French test, if that uh, not up. Uh, uh, I betcha. Like, that's okay. A workbook. Okay. A, a novel or a testing. Thing okay. You Thank you. Yeah. It may have been my imagination, but. Oh, it's on there. It's on the high school. Cabinet. High school. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Would you call the roll, please? Mrs. Getman. Yes. Mr. Goladai. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Workman. Yes. Dr. Bennett. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, on the success, I'm going to try to be real brief. Um, the very first item, it's about the uh, Paint Valley local um, Valley High School and how it's transformed its STEM off offerings to place greater emphasis on teamwork and learning through inquiry. And they have a 3D printer class, and um, the t they teach students how to learn from their mistakes and work together to find solutions. And some of their assignments might be, uh, and examples were creating wrenches or lithographs or toy cars. And they design the product, um, what it's to look like, and then they create what's called a benchmark or a benchy, uh, is what they refer to it. And that is a 
it prints out and it tells, and then they examine it to decide what needs to be changed so that they know how to change their, their program to run the 3D printer for the, um, to improve their product. Um, and the students are working together, problem solving, and um, a lot of teamwork. So that sounded like a, a good idea if you have a 3D <laughs> printer. <laughs> um, the middle school students on the second one at Lon London City's uh, Middle School is helping students discover their self-worth. And if you want to scroll down, um, there's a picture in the hallway that shows the student. There it is. Um, if you can, I don't know if you can enlarge it, but. Um, Adam Heyman, who is the health and physical education teacher, asked the students to think about why they mattered and to help them find their passion and increase their self-respect. So students made posters explaining what's important to them and how they affect their community and families. In other words, why am I important? How am I making a difference? And um, they actually put these posters up in the hallway and um, they've had a lot of media coverage as a result of this, and the students are feeling better about themselves. So I thought that was a really neat idea. And then um, I would just call uh, attention to attention um, Mr. Thompson, the Ohio to pay for workers to upgrade their tech schools for businesses, and how uh, the governor has made available 17.5 million to reimburse um, those businesses that are hiring employees and going to be training them for uh, tech, technology focused credentials. So I didn't know if that applied to you or not, but I <laughs> might want to be aware of it. Worth checking <laughs> into, that's right. Okay, and that's all for tonight. Um, other than the second link, I would like to point out um, for the student achievement, um, we are also focused on, <clears throat> you go back to the agenda, um, this resource kit? The, right, the Student Wellness Resource Toolkit. And there's a lot of information, a lot of links on there. Um, there they are. So that you can click on those. I looked at some of the things that they recommend board members be aware of and other materials that are available. So we put that on our agenda so that you will have an, um, access to that. But, that's something from the Ohio School Board Association. So, hey, and that's all. <laughs> Thank you. I, uh, item B is recommended items for board of approval. We're actually going to approve these items, but they're all going to be approved uh, pending uh, our availability to have them. And you're going to see a lot of them are overnight extended trips. There's an ag trip. There's a um, fruit sale incentive trip and FCCLA conference. And again, these are all dates that will be coming down the road. I'd like to approve those tonight in the event that we can get back to more sense of normalcy than we are today. Uh, but by not approving them, that, that really prohibits us from even having the opportunity to go. Okay, I would entertain a motion then to approve those um, overnight extended student trips. So motion. Thank you, Mr. Workman. Do I have a second? Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Were there any questions or comments about? Okay, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Workman. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Gola Dye. Yes. Mrs. Getzman. Yes. Dr. Bennett. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, fiscal services. Go ahead. If you don't mind. Just scroll to the next, the third page there. Um. I'll just point out a few things on this really quickly. We had uh, three advances come in from the county during the month of February. So um, those are reflected in the first two lines um, of this financial report. Um, you can see our, our typical foundation funds also come, came in. And um, I just wanted to point out that that those things have arrived. Um, the unfortunate reality is this coming month we will pay all the fees to the auditor. <laughs> um, so the last installment isn't as significant as those, but we're thankful to have that and that'll allow us to continue to operate. There's one other thing outside of this. When the board um, passed a resolution for the tax anticipation note, the resolution itself actually in, and this was in February of 2019, made this uh, declaration. The board establishes and will maintain until the principal of and the interest on the notes are paid a separate account as a part of the bond retirement fund. The tax anticipation note was referred to as the bond. That fund wasn't created for some reason. So 
we have created it, and obviously we have to appropriate the funds in order to pay the interest on the tax and participation note. So you see the coffee bar change fund, and then that's their reason for the appropriation underneath that. And that's for fiscal services. Well, you have some donations. Yep. I have two donations. We have one from John Deaver to the East Elementary School, and that was 13 books. And we have a donation from the Maldano family of two books to the Wiggins Street Library. Okay, thank you. I would entertain a motion to approve those fiscal services items as read. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Goldar. Do I have a second? Second. I think. Go ahead, Mrs. Getzman. I think you were second. Um, and were there any questions? Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Goladai. Yes. Mrs. Getzman. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Workman. Yes. Dr. Bennett. Yes. Motion carried. And legislative liaison report. There isn't much uh, on this uh, for this month, except uh, the state legislature is discussing the coronavirus and what uh, steps are being taken here in Ohio. And I think, personally, Ohio has been leading the way with um, prevention. And uh, I'm very, very proud of, of our state uh, and the steps we were taking. So um, there isn't very much there. Uh, when you have a chance, just uh, click, click onto that link. And uh, if you have any questions down the road, or if I hear of anything down the road, I will uh, shoot an email to everyone and, or public. So that's it. Yeah, the only uh, other thing that I hope that they keep at the forefront is the uh, the voucher discussion um, mm -hmm. certainly has taken a back seat and understandably so but to move it from where it was before to where it was gonna you know change I hope it doesn't get forgotten yeah. and then all of a sudden it's like well the time period is mm -hmm. up it just has to be what it is because I think there was quite um, an enormous outpouring of mm -hmm of uh, support for some adjustments to that. Mm -hmm. I feel like it was moving in that direction. Yes, it was. The topic is completely, uh, again, and rightfully so, has changed, mm -hmm. but um, <coughs> let's hope they work through that situation. Well, and I'm not sure how they're gonna be meeting if there are restrictions. Um, <laughs> yes, because when, together and, right. when I went, they were supposed to meet after the election, yeah. you know, get back together for the last week of March. Um, and, and, you know, I worry that if they can't get together, are there, you know, automatic provisions that if it goes past this date, it's automatically enacted and so on. So I'm sure there are people who are keeping abreast of that situation, but um, that certainly is something that will impact us for a long time if it's if it's not dealt with in a manner of which I think we were heading. Um, item B is a number of items for board approval tonight. There are re facility requests, and again, I would put this in the the idea of a caveat as well that if we're if we have the ability to uh, provide these facilities and we're able to open up, then we would certainly entertain them by approving them. Uh, we'll do so pending the fact that we can actually provide it. Um, as I told you before, right now we have shut all facilities down. Every one of these folks and all those folks who have been provided uh, facility requests have been notified. And, and they understand where we're at right now at this time. And item two, uh, again, same facility request. Item three is a little bit different. Uh, it is a Knox County Educational Service Center contract. Um, and that was really, uh, should have been um, enacted upon earlier. So you're seeing that for the first time. Uh, for this school year, there's also a memorandum of understanding for SNAP education. Interestingly enough, this has nothing to do with um, our current situation. It was really preparing us as we kind of moved down the road a little bit. And then we did have one design build change order uh, on the uh, field house. We try to keep you abreast of all of those small change orders that help us to continue to move forward. So those five items for your approval. Okay, I would entertain a motion for those five. So moved. Thanks. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Sorry, Tim. Mr. Workman, would you like to yes. second? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> any questions on any of the items? Uh, I have one question that isn't related, but it's on facilities. Um, 
has there been any discussion with the Knox Community Hospital in a case of overflow that they would still be permitted to use our facilities? Um, we have been in contact with uh, the health department uh, and Julie Miller, the director, and uh, our facilities are available to them if they need them. Okay. Um, they would probably say that our facilities would, although nice, you know, might be a secondary facility right. because they don't want to bring those things into the school, but they do understand that, you know, we will always be here to support their efforts as they are ours. Okay, thank you. Good question. Any other questions? We should call the roll, please. Mr. Goladai? Yes. Mr. Workman? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mrs. Getzman? Yes. Dr. Rennan? Yes, motion carried. Thank you. Uh, student services? I have a couple contracts um, to bring to you. The first thing is the item for information. Um, hopefully, you've had a chance to read through that. Um, we have about 50 students in the district right now that are English second language learners. Many of their parents are not English speakers and um, those numbers continue to grow every year. And one of the things that we found challenging is having parent-teacher conferences, IEP meetings, ETR meetings when we are unable to communicate with a parent. Um, it is our civil rights responsibility to be able to communicate with them, both in written and in oral language. So I reached out to KCH, um, to Bruce Boehner, and asked him what they do, because of course they have a non-English speaker coming into the ER, they have to have a solution. And um, they use an online service, and um, it's not cheap, um, but I reached out to the company and they were, were very willing to work with us. Um, SpectreCore, the first um, thing on the board approval, is a company that is overarching and what they do is they help find an agency down here to be specific to our needs. So if we were healthcare, they would look at one company particularly. Um, education was a little bit different for them. It's not something normal, but they were able to tie us in with this company who will be available 24-7, 365. And it will be so spontaneous that um, I will be the contact person to arrange those. It's not going to be, hey, a principal just picks up the phone and calls. But we will arrange for, we have an IEP meeting at 2 o'clock tomorrow, and I need a Mandarin Chinese um, translator. The meeting will come together. They will pick up the phone. They will call. They will give them the secret number for our account, and they will patch it. And within two or three minutes, we will have that speaker on the phone with us. And they will not be translating any written work, and they won't have the written work in front of them, but it will be like we do, you see the governor using a sign language interpreter. They say two or three sentences, we say two or three sentences. It's probably gonna make our meetings twice as long, but um, it will be something that I think we really need to put in place right now. Um, it's going to be very strategic in how it's used. Sometimes we have a bilingual parent who comes and um, is very capable of understanding. Um, Sometimes they bring a friend. There are many um, Spanish speakers in the community that work with our Spanish population who sometimes they will come and just as a friend to interpret. And we would need to have someone on this for that. Um, this company worked with us very well. There is no minimum monthly fee, which is not normal. Um, she said we probably couldn't afford that. So she just kind of washed it away and said, we don't need it. So as you saw in the contract, I think it's $1.45 a minute. Um, our meetings 45 minutes to an hour probably money well spent for us to not only build those relationships with those families but to um, respect their rights as a parent to fully participate in those IEP meetings which is a federal uh, requirement for us and um, so we're gonna try it this year um, we may put this in place and never need it but I think it's gonna be something that we're gonna watch real closely um, I know that there is a Somalian speaking family that just signed up for preschool. That's a new one for us. Um, we've had Chinese speaking and Spanish as pretty much our two biggest languages, but you never know who moves into town. And so I think we need to just be prepared and they will be able to handle any language you throw at them. So it's pretty exciting. Uh, any questions about that before I move on? So we have those contracts, the Spectre Core, which is the one I just went over. Um, EJ Therapy is an outside group that is providing therapy for our students that are housed at the, um, the Village Network site in Worcester. 
Um, they would be doing some therapy for them there. And the third one is our CAT contract. And you will notice that the dates are kind of odd. Um, last year's contract was April 1 to December 31st. We didn't really have a contract from January to now. Um, that just seems to be the way it seems to be. And we just they just keep running last year's contract for us before they raise the price. So it is what it is. Um, but those three contracts for your approval. Okay, thank you. I would entertain a motion then to approve those three items. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Gula. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Workman. Were there any questions? Um, in regards to the, yes, I have a question. Thank you. In regards to the second language of, of or the children, um, I know that this is maybe down the road, but depending on how long we are out, are those children, do you think, going to be okay with the materials that they have and or online learning? Through right, and that's a really good question. We have one um, English second language teacher that handles our middle school and high school, and he is he actually has courses. He, he has kids every period of the day. And so he is preparing lessons for his students the way Darcy's preparing them for hers. And so there will be online things that they use. And those students are very familiar with some specific right. online work anyway. Right. And so um, he's going to be available to have the same conversations with them that Darcy would. Right. At the elementary level, we have a, um, an ESL teacher who handles students across all six buildings right now. Okay. And she is preparing materials. She's um, making sure that tomorrow they have access to that IXL program that they use in the in her room every every day that there's that they see her. Um, but I think, and that's a very good point because all four thousand of our kids are not going to get the same education that they would in Darcy's classroom every day. Um, and so some of it's going to be a learning curve. Right. Right. Um, but the, but it's available. It's, it's, gonna it's be, there. Yeah. They are. They are actually sending work home with these students. Okay. Um, unfortunately, some of those younger kiddos, um, dad tends to be the one that's bilingual. Mm -hmm. Dad's working mm -hmm. during this time, and mom's at home, and mom doesn't speak English. So sometimes that's going to be a little bit of a challenge. Um, but I, it'll be exciting to watch. I think yes. all of this evolve. Yeah. But um, it may be something that we want to not chop a little bit. Good. So, okay. Question. Thank you. Any other questions? Would you call the roll, please? Ms. Regola Dye. Yes. Mr. Workman. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Mrs. Getzman. Yes. Dr. Bennett. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. And personnel. Under the personnel of certificated and licensed staff, no information at this time. Uh, you'll see a host of things that are pretty traditional. Do the resignation of a middle school cross country coach. Uh, we have some employment uh, things for substitute teachers. We've got our summer school group uh, and volunteers. And then we also have uh, item number two, which is something we're really proud of that will begin next year. Um, we're approving tonight uh, the addition of six school social workers. Um, five will be new to the district. One will be uh, the sixth one will actually be replacing uh, a retired social worker. We'll talk about it some other time. Um, but the ability to have um, uh, eight social workers in the district meeting our kids' social emotional needs is, is a gift. It's something that the uh, wellness monies uh, that were provided for us, we really sat down as a, as a district and determined that that was one of our greatest needs. So every elementary will have a social worker, the high school and middle school will have a social worker uh, to really help work with uh, their principals and guidance counselors to, to meet the needs of kids. And they will start next year. And remember, we, we, we had thoughts of bringing them on towards the end of the year um, and decided to hold off on that, especially because these are some really outstanding candidates. Um, you know, who, who it would have put their work in jeopardizing positions if they left mid-year. Mm -hmm. And um, um, we just felt it was best to get a fresh start next year. And, and obviously now it, it works out, you know, yeah. Yeah. probably better for us in that case. So we're excited to have that. I think we'll have services that a lot of districts don't have for the size of the school district that we are. If I can add one piece to that. Um, 
we currently have three social workers at the elementary level that each are assigned two buildings. Um, they're generally in the larger building three days a week and the smaller building two days a week. All of all three of those people are sending things home to their to all K five students tomorrow in their bags. Of maybe it's a website to look at, maybe it's an article to read about. What am I thinking through this Corona thing? And just helping them to process. They've also been charged with. They kind of have their kids that are those frequent flyers in their mm -hmm. office that just kind of need some talking through with some things. They've been charged with calling those families, talking with those families, FaceTiming them, Skyping them, Google Hangout, just to touch base with these kids. Because some of these kiddos um, have a, a lot of mental health issues or their families are struggling. We have a lot of kids in foster care. And for them to just, just touch them once in a while from afar and just to make sure that they're seeing how they're doing, we're also checking with all of our hot meals um, locations across the community to make sure that, because if they can only feed 10 at a time, that's gonna get challenging. So we're checking with each of those and making sure that families have that information of, you know, is the church changing their plan? Can I still get dinner? You know, we may be feeding a breakfast and lunch, but they, you know, they may want that third meal. So we're kind of following up on that mental health side of our kids too. Okay. Thank you. Um, I would entertain a motion then to approve those items. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Gulladai. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Mrs. Gessner. Were there any questions? Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Gulladai. Yes. Mrs. Getzman. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Workman. Yes. Dr. Bennett. Yes. Motion carried and for classified staff. Under classified staff, we have no items for information. Uh, one item for board approval for substitute employment. Uh, you see three names listed there, uh, and that would conclude this section. Okay, we would entertain a motion to approve the classified staff item. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Gorilla Dye. Do I have a second? Also. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. And I assume there are no questions. If you call the roll, please. Mr. Gorilla Dye. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Mr. Workman. Yes. Mrs. Getzman. Yes. Dr. Bennett. Yes. Motion carried. Is there anything else that we I do have something for the board and for executive session of employment. Andrew. I would entertain a motion then to um, go into executive session. So moved. Thank you. I'll well, second. Thank you, Mr. Workman. And we'd like to call the roll and thank you for coming and be yes. safe. Thank Stay you. Healthy.